this card came in the mail for me today. Yeah, I needed to pick up a new copy of Brave Forge Bracers. One, because I'm playing Emperor now in Blitz, but two, because I think it's gonna be really good in heavy hitters. And it's not the only card I think is gonna be really good in heavy hitters, so let's talk about a few of them. But we are gonna start with Brave Forge Bracers. This is going to be a Guardian Warrior Brute set, and I think some cards that exist within the game already are going to get even more play, and this is one of them. Why? Well, look at the effect. It is just blanket exactly what a warrior is sort of built to do. Warriors have always been about their weapons, always been about attacking with their weapons. Even Bolton, who has attack action cards, is sort of predicated on using his weapons for combo or getting value out of his weapons. And this is a card that I could see getting value in this next set. We know that Centauri Sabres are going to be returning in this set with Kasai, and we can assume that weapons matter with regards to the Warriors. And if that's the case, then I predict that this thing will continue to be a solid inclusion within just the whole Warrior package. But it's not the only card, because if we extrapolate out some of the data we've gotten from the three or so spoilers we've seen, I think Iron Song Determination is also going to be a very good card. If you look at these two cards, they both refer to the wager mechanic, which is new in heavy hitters coming soon. And it basically allows you to bet between you and your opponent uh, on whether or not your attack is going to hit. If it does hit, then you get the reward. In some cases, it's something like a gold token, as you can see on money where your mouth is. Uh, and in other cases, it's a, you know an agility token or all the other tokens like that. If it does not hit, your opponent gets it, which is quite good for your opponent because you're giving a symmetric effect to your opponent that they don't have to play. But Iron Song Determination turns that on its head because you're almost guaranteeing in a lot of respects that unless your opponent's giving you equipment, you're getting the hit on whatever uh, this wager is going to be and you're winning that wager. So Double Down and Money Where Your Mouth Is both show some it's huge promise on the wager mechanic side of things and iron song determination melds directly into that game plan which is why i think that card is going to be quite good in this set for warriors i mean just look at money where your mouth is it's going to give you a gold token if you connect and gold is hard to come by and quite good in this upcoming set i would assume and finally, the card that I very much want to see like some support for, and I'm hoping is better with this next set, Spill Blood. Spill Blood is so cool. Look, here's the thing. Why do I want this? Well, because Spill Blood is awesome, and plus two and dominate seems really cool. But the other reason I want this, and or maybe hope that this could be a thing going forward, is because it has been mentioned that this is going to be a very heavy, like, new weapon set. It's going to add new weapons to the game, uh, possibly a lot more equipment, a lot more weapons. And with that comes the possibility of, you know, warriors picking up axes or maybe just generic axes in general, which could be really cool. And if we get axes, then spill blood goes up in playability. And I'm excited for that because I want this card to be like something you could actually run out there in an aggressive version of an axe list. Yes, you can play this in Decimator Dory and it's fine. You don't really use it because that deck just blocks. And I don't want that for this card. I wanna smash people with the axe. So I'm hoping that that card gets a little bit of support in this heavy hitter set. On to the Guardians as I smack the mic with my hand and starting with Tectonic Plating, Guardian is just one of those classes. Again, just kind of like with the Brave Forge Bracers and Warrior, Guardian is melded with this idea of creating seismic surge tokens. It started in WTR with the very first set ever released, and it has not let up since. It could perhaps be the Teclo Foundry Heart of this set. Look back at how Bright Lights uh, brought Teclo Foundry Heart said look you're gonna need this card because it's all mechanologist this is a perfect like legendary for reprint in this set i feel like tech plating is almost that exact same way it fits so well for guardian that they just want to play it out there so you might as well get more of it into the hands of more players and on that same vein i feel like looking at how equipment is going to be perhaps approached in this set with a lot of maybe equipment, a lot of uh, weapons and things like that. I feel like this card is gonna get better. 
buckle being a uh, an action that you can play out there that gives guardians attacks plus one dominate and if it hits a hero you get to just blow up a, an equipment they control with a minus one counter on it and this is one of those like predictions that i have that i feel is going to be pretty stable because this is going to be a very heavy hitters ah no heavy like equipment set based on the classes that we see i mean look at what brutes bring they bring equipment that can block more often than not right you at the very least scab skin leathers you look at warriors they have the fridgest of fridges and then guardian the same way and so if this set really does pump up those three classes this card is due for an increase in play simply because it can threaten just removing one of those linchpin battle worn pieces from the game for your opponent and that's quite quite powerful so i could see this picking up greatly going forward if uh if this is indeed going to be a heavy equipment set but what i really really want is for my spoiler card to see more play look here's the thing this was one of several cards that i spoiled from tales of aria and it was probably my favorite of all of the cards that i spoiled outside of lexi i was very fortunate to get to spoil lexi the hero but Outside of those, I, like this was the one that I thoroughly enjoyed and I jammed into multiple Guardian decks. But even this card that I showed earlier, Double Down, enables Thump to function and not only just enables it, but like off of two blues, you can play these two cards, come in for nine with Dominate and like uh, hit a hero, discard a card. Like that seems pretty solid, right? Like you immediately get the buff. You can also still just play this with like Pummel, but I just... Deep down, I just want Thump to be a thing because I just love the idea of Thump. This is probably the most pie in the sky of all the cards that I put on here, but maybe I'm just enamored by this spoiler card that I got to reveal so many years ago, and I think it's a cool card with cool art, and I want it to be a thing. So let me know in a comment below what cards you want to be a thing that aren't a thing right now. Maybe it's not even one of these classes. Maybe it's just a card from a different class. Maybe you're like, I really want this combo line for Katsu to be a thing, and it's not quite a thing yet. I don't know. Let me know that in a comment below. And finally, that brings us to the Brutes, and we got to start with Scowling Fleshbag. We just got Scowling Fleshbag this past year in Dusk Till Dawn, and I think it's going to continue to just be a dominant piece. Like, it is probably one of the best pieces that... Uh, just in general, that a class has gotten in a recent memory for equipment, as far as equipment goes. And uh, I don't foresee it falling off anytime soon. I would be shocked if they printed something that was better than Scowling Fleshbag for Brute. It would be shocking. This was, honestly, this was number 11 on my top 10 cards list. And I had so many equipments and other things on there that I just was like, eh, maybe this is, it's really good. It's stinking good. And honestly, I picked this card over Scabskin Leathers, which maybe is wrong. Maybe Scabskins is just the way to go, but a Scowling Fleshbag seems like so dominant that it's just gonna continue to see massive play and even more play now that we uh, have uh, more cards coming out for Brute. But if we're extrapolating out what Brute might want to be doing Here's another card I think is going to go up, and it's one that already sees play now, but increased a little bit more recently. Savage Feast. Why Savage Feast? Well, Savage Feast kind of, I mean, it's always been there, it's always been played, and it's always been good, but it got a little bit better when they released Beaten Trackers, and uh, then I think it's getting even more play in this set because go again seems to matter in this set let me prove it to you here's runner runner it's a card from the upcoming set and it says when this attacks if it has go again create an agility token it is a brute and warrior action attack and assuming that this card is indicative of what we might find in the set we're going to be finding go again enabler cards and if that's the case runner runner kind of shows that savage feast is going to be even better because if we're getting more capacity from a brute perspective to give go again to our attacks specifically go again but also action points gaining action points then savage feasts effect of getting to just draw you a card 
is that much better. If you can give Savage Feast Go Again off of the same Go Again enablers that Runner Runner might just be better off for from this set, then Savage Feast is going to go up in value greatly, in my opinion, and see even more play than it already is. I think that that's like a slam dunk take, but uh, tell me if I'm wrong in a comment below. Runner Runner just seems to be like a, a direct pointing towards Savage Feast as like could be viable if Runner Runner is also viable. A two for six, by the way, with a three block attached to it and like a way to, you know, increase go again seems pretty good. So I'm curious to see how Runner Runner gets enabled from this upcoming set. And if it applies to Savage Feast, you got something to talk about. And finally, and this is kind of a weird one, especially if you're a brute main, I have a feeling that the way that they're gonna start taking brute isn't necessarily just like swing big thing, make efficient play, sometimes have variance, you know, rue the day, that sort of thing. I think we're moving into a semi combo position. And this is so out in like left field. This is tinfoil hat theory through and through, but Berserk is a fun freaking card. If you have never played this card, it's super fun. And it almost in a way like kind of hints that they could take Brute into a more like combo heavy, wombo combo drawing cards, uh, playing cards, intimidating, uh, you know, like cycling that style of play a little bit more than just like the rolling dice. I don't know if they're gonna go back to the rolling dice heavily side of things like they did with like Everfest. I feel like if they're gonna do one of those sort of like things for a class, I don't even wanna call it a gimmick. It doesn't really feel like a gimmick, but if they're gonna give it like an identity, this is perhaps the way that they're gonna lean with more of like a combo thing of like drawing cards so that you can play more attacks and then draw more cards. It just feels like this could be where they go, and I want them to. I think that's the thing. Again, this is the hope pick for Brute for me, and I desperately want this to be a thing because I like I like combos. Like, I'm just a sucker for combos. I play Wizard. It's like what we do. And so it'd be cool if Brute has like this like uh, kind of intricate, thinky game plan in a set that is all about punching if brute's the one that's like okay how do we do this draw cards hit the combo i think that would be hilarious so i'm really hoping that a cards like berserk uh come out for brute and enable that sort of game plan so those are my picks let me know what you think about uh this upcoming heavy hitter set what are your predictions what do you think is going to see play uh based on the few spoilers that we've seen there are also some crazy expansion slot spoilers for current heroes right now. So sound off in a comment below. Where do you think this set is going? Are you hyped about it? Are you looking forward to seeing these three classes go toe to toe in the arena? And what do you most want to see from this set? If you enjoy videos like this, make numbers go slightly higher because we want numbers to go up and we don't want them to just sit there. Because sitting there, being complacent, that's not where we are. That's so 2023. We're headed to 2024 now. As always, thanks for watching.